What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Elder Scrolls Lore, and today we're going to be talking about the Imperial Navy. Now before we start, I'd like to thank Ares for allowing me to use this music, and as well make a shout out for the Discord chat. The link is in the description below, as well as in the channel header. Um, with that being said, uh, everything should be well underway for the 500 subs video by the time I'm recording this video. Um, I have all the I have all the clips, I have all the footage I need, just gotta edit it all together. That'll be done. And then when we eventually get to 600, I will stream. <laughs> it's been, uh, it's been chaotic. Uh, with that being said, um, not too much going on. We have, I got the footage for another community video, and I already have the script that was done by one of the community members, so that's already on its way. I just gotta record it now at this point, and then it'd be done. Uh, and with that being said, today we're going to be talking about the Imperial Navy, so let's begin. The Imperial Navy is the aquatic fighting force for the Empire of Cyrodiil. The Navy has been tasked from anything from hunting down pirates to fighting wars and even invading continents such as Akavir. They are known to have existed from the First Era through the Third Era and the later Fourth Era. Similarly to the Imperial Legion video, today we're going to be talking about anything from the Third Empire and beyond. We're not going to go and cover anything from the Elysian or the Remid Dynasties. We're going to cover them separate. They're different empires. So everything right now is going to be from the Third Empire and up from when the Third Empire was created. I meant to say Third Era, not Third Empire in the first part, but whatever. <laughs> so, when Tiber Septum was still trying to conquer all of Tamriel, the Imperial Navy, Navy undoubtedly saw combat all across Tamriel. However, the main fighting it did was that of the New West Navy in Hammerfell. This faction of the Navy had two known leaders, the first being Basi Hadrak until sometime in the 9th century of the Second Era when he was assassinated, and the second was one of the Septum's potentates, Emil Reichten. Under Emil, the Navy went on to win the Battle of Hunding Bay, where they defeated the last High King of Hammerfell, Thassad II. After this battle, Stros Mackay was conquered, which was the last place in Hammerfell to be untouched by the Empire. This navy consisted of mostly Colovian nobility. This no navy also has pictures drawn of it, giving us a good image at what the Imperial Navy might have looked like during this time and what kind of ships they might have had during the Tiber Wars. The navy was widely considered unbeatable and was also used during the invasion of Morrowind, where they fought, fought in badly coordinated battles near Black Marsh's borders and swamps. The Navy also played a major role in the Empire's assault on Akavir from around 271 of the Third Era to 290. In the early years of the 270s during the Third Era, the Emperor Uriel Septim V began planning an invasion of Akavir and several islands between Tamriel and the continent. It was decided that the current size of the Imperial Navy was not large enough to carry out this invasion, so the Emperor ordered that new ships be built. Thus, the Far East Fleet was created. It was said to be so large that this new fleet nearly doubled the current size of the navy. The fleet is known to have been able to carry at least two legions with large amounts of supplies for a long voyage. The fleet was originally made, uh, the fleet was originally made to invade Akavir, but it also had several other objectives as well. Before it could sail to Akavir, the fleet needed to conquer the islands of Roscree and Esrinat. These islands were wealthy trade islands that the Imperial Navy would use as military ports to sail to Akavir. Once the islands had been taken, the fleet was loaded up with the Imperial Legion soldiers and set off to Akavir. When the fleet arrived, they did no fighting. The Tsayetsky had no navy for the Imperial Navy to face, so they simply delivered off their troops. Many sailed off to perform supply runs across the ocean and bring more legions and settlers over for the invasion. However, constant storms slowed and eventually halted all sailing across the ocean until the Emperor authorized the use of battle mages to accompany the fleet to stop the storms. Eventually disaster struck the legions in Akavir and almost every soldier was killed along with the Emperor. Much of the fleet was also destroyed in this failed conquest. When the Camorran Usurper began to damage the Empire, the Imperial Navy took every ship, including pirate ships, to fight in the war. As a result of the war, the Navy did not respond to various smugglers around the Gold Coast, and because the Navy needed supplies in High Rock and had no forces to guard them, pirates took a profit. With the Navy too occupied fighting the Camorran Usurper, Eastern Tamriel became fearful of, pirate, of the pirate gang known as the Red Sabres. As a result, the captain of these pirates Tordan Apadul Dugal got a bounty on his head worth five or sorry, 
40,000 septums. When the Camorran usurper was eventually beaten, Commodore Facil Umbernox turned his attention on the Red Sabres. He sent out many ships and, his, and men in his search in the, for the pirates, and after four years, found them. Captain Dugall had tricked Umbernox's ma- main force for, with a fake trail and tried to catch the Commodore off guard, but Umbernox had left men behind just in case the pirates had came back. The pirates fought the navy in the bay, as the Imperials had set fire to the town to prevent the pirates from escaping on land. Most Imperials didn't really care as at the time, and Vale was mainly settled by thieves. When the battle ended, only two ships were left standing, the pirates Black Flag and Abernonix's flagship. This was largely due to Abernonix having battle mages aboard his ships. Captain Dugal, who went who knew defeat was coming, tried to flee from Abernonix. However, his retreat in his retreat, Abernonix's battle mages cast spells upon the black flag, causing the nearby cliff to slowly collapse and seal the pirate and his crew in. As a result, Abernonix was awarded Anvil and his d- dynasty has ruled the city ever since. In the early fourth era, the empire was in shambles after the Oblivion Crisis. What remained of the Imperial Navy protected the settlement of Water's Edge from the forces of Leowen and Bravil. The Imperial Navy had also fought in the Great War, where they had several naval clashes on Lake Rumar with the Dominion Navy. These naval clashes ultimately ended in failure as the Imperial City fell in 174 of the Fourth Era on the 12th of the Second Seed to the superior forces of the Altmeri Dominion. So with that being said, that is all we have today on the Third Imperial Navy, I should say Third Ar- Third Empire Imperial Navy. And with that being said, I might co- I'm going to cover the other navies in the future. This is a recommended topic. So doing the navies and the the legions, obviously. So um, with that being said, those these this is another community topic that I'm doing. If you have any recommendations of future topics, please let me know in the comments below or in the Discord chat. It's a bit easier in the Discord chat to keep track of what's going on. Uh, I usually get to everything, so. With that being said, I've been covering everything. Obviously, everything I've been covering has been mostly community topics with the exception of the cities. So cities are not community projects. That's actually something I like to do, but um, I'm catching up on some of the community topics while I'm at it. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe for more content just like this, and I hope to see you guys around. Peace.